Welcome back to the third episode of Tackle Talk here on Smith Fishing Outdoors. And today, we're talking about top water. But right before we get into that, I'm going to be speaking at the Wausau Muskie Bash, March 19th. Um, I'll be speaking on Saturday. March 20th. March 20th. It'll be like 1 o'clock or something. You'll have mm -hmm. to look at the calendar. But before we do that, Let's get right into the baits. Into the baits. Into the baits. Everybody's been clamoring. They want to talk about top water. Top water. And we brought, this is what we normally use in a season. This is, you know, all the different sounds that we really like in the boat. Uh, and get us bit. So we got flap tails, flap tails creepers, creepers, wobblers, wobblers toppers, toppers, walk the dogs, walk the dogs prop baits, prop baits, and, and globes. globes. So between that, we got everything covered. Uh, we're talk a little bit of tips of when we use them, why we use them. Um, Maybe a few stories. A few stories, exactly. So, um, let's start it off. We're, let's start off with flap tails. So we can get the, they got the most hooks to get off the table here. So, thank you for everybody uh, chiming in. These series have gone really well. Appreciate it. Yeah, they're fun. They're fun, too. It's nice. It's winter time. It's nice we can talk baits. Yeah, we can look at all the baits and you're exactly. like, oh, I caught a fish on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Oh, I so, lost one on that one last year. We got <laughs> six flap tails. Six us. flap tails. Six tails. I'm saying, why don't you just use one? <laughs> they all got different sounds. And to be really exact, sometimes it's a different sound in the same style of bait. Same the style. The same brand of bait. So here's two Joe Wicks. Joe Wicks is a custom uh, bait maker. He makes all sorts of baits, flap creepers and everything. This one's number 0533. This one's number 7067. So this one's definitely made a lot later than this one. It's like 200. This one is a lot more than that number. I know. Um, this one is a lot quieter. And this one is a lot louder. You can hear this one as far as you can cast out there. You hear it going click, 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 coming back. And uh, I don't know why. This seems like sometimes they want this, the clickier one in the bigger waves. They want the quieter one on the flat calm. So I keep them both. There's scenarios for both. And um, that's why. Um, bucket duty. Bucket duty. You got bucket duty there. Uh, another bait out that I got last year, Randy Pafford, a custom builder down in Waukesha, Wisconsin, makes uh, some creepers and uh, he makes a flap tail. And it's very hard to get Randy baits. If you see him, snatch them up. Uh, he only makes about 12 to 20 of baits a year. Um, he's got a little bit shorter lead out front. Um, otherwise, it's still kind of got the same flap tail connection that it would on, uh, on uh, the last bait we've seen there. Um, but, uh, this one pushes a lot of water, so it's got a different style. I, I got it later in the season. I want to try it in June here, this year. I think it'll be really good because I think it's, it's got a good, it's got a good softer sound. Uh, another softer sound that we've had very good June success in. There's a guide out of, uh, uh Waukesha, guides on Pawaukee, his name is Jim Dembeck makes a, uh, um, a flap tail. This one's really old, probably 25, 30 years old. But it's got a single blade on the bottom, um, comes out with a square nail out the back, one single um, spreader, and, and I haven't caught, found any difference on the hookup ratio between a double spreader or a single. Um, real long lead. This swing comes in kind of quiet. Uh, it's got a flat brass plate on the back, but proven. We've caught fish and moved fish on this one. Um, some nice fish we've caught It's also good because a lot of, sometimes you get a smaller fish They'll just reach for the blade, and they'll just get right in between the spreader bars. But yeah. this one, they go for it, and they'll get that back hook. In the and you'll get your 34, 35 inch Wisconsin yeah. muskie. We got TR Custom flap tail. This one, this one's got a 223 cartridge in the back. 
uh, Push is a really good wake. You were throwing this in October one day. I was throwing in October one day. Like a, um, it was 60 degree water temp. It was yeah. first of October. And you were throwing every other bait that we have here. Could move a fish. Could move a fish. I throw it. I pick it out of the box. Take a couple casts. Here comes one right behind it. Here comes another one. Here comes another. You moved like four muskies that were hot. Like seriously, these fish were having convulsions on this bait. They were so hot. And these were all fish that I had casted over. So sound makes a huge difference. Sound does make a difference. Exactly. More than color, in my opinion. Yeah, because especially with top water, yep. they don't see the top of your bait. Corey Meyer makes a really nice one. Um, again, it's got it's a little more subtle, so I keep it with that. He's got a loose wire out front. Has a little bit of a shimmy as, he, as it's got a nice little wake. So a wake has a lot to do with it too. It kind of really looks nice how it's coming through the water, and I think the fish react to it. Um, creepers. 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 Fish that I've never you know. You haven't caught a fish on a creeper, and I don't know why, but have you netted them for me on creepers? Like seven or eight. Yeah, a bunch more than that. Um, one good one last year. You moved on a bucktail, and I think oh, I got I got yeah. it on a creeper last year. I moved it on a bucktail, and I said, 44. Gets it out of the bag, puts it on the bump board, 44. You were right on. Yep. Same exact spot. <laughs> I just, that one, sometimes you want to try something different behind you. Uh, high, high fin makes made a good creeper from years ago. This is a wooden one. You nice, nice sound. A little, t little more, a little more higher pitch. Pop, 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 as it goes through. Sometimes when it comes to creepers, it's it's the pitch too. Um, what speed do you want to run creepers at, as well as flap tails? Slow. What happened last year when you were running uh, flap tails uh, with Lee Towson and Robbie on today's angler? Lee had more bites. Yep. And what was he doing? Slower. He was going slower. He has patience. He has patience. I don't. <laughs> you caught one. You caught yeah. one on Lee's flap tail. He makes a really good flap tail too. You had it, you know, if I had one, I'd show it to you. <laughs> um, but it's it's a really good flap tail. So um definitely slow. I see people working creepers and they're going bum, 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 across the water. No. Slow gets you the bite. <laughs> yep, sometimes slower than that. Um <laughs> TR Custom makes a really good one for about 40 bucks. They make a really nice creeper that's got a nice sound to it. Um, my buddy Randy Pafford, he makes a couple of my of my faves. These are um, uh, got bigger wings on them, and um, I got one with I put a flap tail on the back. It goes clicks off the back of the of the uh, uh, hooks, and then um, so and they both got a little bit sound. No, you can play with the wings on these. You can bend these a little bit with the pliers. You'll get that little more. You go from higher pitch to lower pitch, depending on how you want them. Get them tuned uh, from whether because you notice one of them I got more wings, more straight out, and the other ones I got wing pull. It's just what I wanted that day for the sound. What I was moving fish on. So um, most of the fish you got these spreader bars in the back. Uh, most fish I catch on the front hook. I mean, it's nothing but, I mean, you see about that much out of the fish's mouth. It's just... I don't catch fish on it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't work them slow enough. I mean, I like a really nice slow wheel, a reel on these. I mean, I've been known to b dig out an old 6500 C3 and, and, and on my wobbler rod and everything and and uh, put them on the one box. Wow. And uh, those, those are... You use a really slow reel like that. That helps. That helps a lot. So, um, wobblers. You've wobblers. caught a lot of fish on wobblers. We'll grab the my favorite. We got a uh, Wally Pog. Wally Pog. Yep. There's the name. Nimmer Swimmer Wally Nimmer Pog. Nimmer Swimmer Wally Pog. I'll tell you a story about this one. I was throwing it one day, and pretty now, much Lake of the Woods. Lake of the Woods. Right before sun down, right before about to get destroyed by his mosquitoes, and I was just twitching it about, with, or I was just reeling it. I'm about my third turn of the reel, boom! And I was fighting it all the way in. You were sitting there waiting for the net because I was using my uh, top water reel, a little slow reel, yep. and I was sitting there trying to keep up to it, swimming towards me, and. Got him in the bag, it was like, what was it, 40, 
two or something two, like that. Yeah. yeah. What I mean by slow reel is a lot of times on these top waters, um, I like a five three to one, something really slow like that. A Calcutta. Little Calcutta is another, you know, that's even like a four seven to one. I mean, it really gets you to stay slow on a lot of those baits, like these wobblers. Um, you've caught you caught a forty seven and a half. Yep. On a hog on a hog wobbler. This is the husky hog wobbler, and this is the regular. And um, I've done real well, even into September and October, on these where you just barely crawl them on the surface in the morning. Um, you know, so I had one, I had one morning that it was in a, it was in a tournament and, uh, it was like my second cast of the morning on a hog wobbler and the water air temp was 32 degrees that morning. And my boat partner thought I was stupid throwing hog wobbler that morning. And the water temp was like 49, 50. And um, that fish came up and blew up just got mad growled at it as i started to pull it out of the water and then when i went i stuck it back in the water made one quick turn boom stuck a 41 um after i put it back in the water um so yeah you can use you can catch fish on these uh, all types of year during the year too so i mean i had one just... like a year a year or two ago that ate it remember he went like four feet in the air four feet in that was, was 40, eye level 47 and a half on a husky hog wobbler you got yeah that's beautiful fish that was your pb at one point in time it was my pb <laughs> yep so oh. lee makes a really good one uh check this one out it's h tool h2o he makes this on occasion um i've done real well on this one he's got a little flap on the back like that so things to check out you gotta have a wobbler in your boat right yep Okay. You always got to have a wobbler. Let's go on to uh, globes. We'll, get the, we'll go do the globe lineup here. So, I got I got some baits. We got, we got this, this globe, the Randy Pafford. And then this one's a little louder, Randy Pafford. And, I don't know, um... One's actually been rewired and actually got a smaller wire in the in it when it got rewired and it's quieter. So there's a real difference, even though they're exactly the same, with the wire size is how the sound comes out. And I've had some better luck in Wisconsin on the quieter globes. Yeah. And I've had better luck in Minnesota on the louder, on the louder globes. So something that I don't know. It's the difference in fish or what, but they like that. Um, another loud globe out there. TR Custom. TR Custom makes a really good one. You can pick these up for about 40 bucks. You can tell it's got a whole different ting to it. A lot of um, noise. And then there's uh, a Cadillac one out there that, that a lot of people like are the, are the Markowitz globes. It makes a, a really good one. Um, so... He's got spreader bars on the bottom. Spreader bars. You know, there's a time for spreader bars and there's time for not. Um, when you're in really heavy late fall grass, yeah. the spreaders are kind of a pain. They're kind of like a rake, but. Um, she already rip off all the leaves. <laughs> Let's get going on top. This is a bait that not a lot of people throw. And I know that from my guiding customers that get in my boat and they got, I look at their bait box and hardly any of them, and I'll hand them a topper and they'll look at me and go, why do I want to throw a topper? I said, because they catch big, big fish. And if I can get <laughs> Yeah, there you go. A little click yep. in there. A little click in there. Uh, painted blades are a little quieter than metal blades when it's it comes to my personal one. Yeah. Fisher likes that painted one. He's done real good on it. He's caught a lot of fish on it. A lot of times uh, they'll just, just like this one more than yours. Yep. And then uh, this one, I kind of tune these blades. I, I bend them up there a little bit, but you can t you can hear that the real whistle on this one. And uh, they really like that. And then we have TR Customs. It's got a nice sound and a little more squeak and yeah that one rides really low in the water yeah i was impressed i used that one last year i'm impressed i love the color pattern too 
Um, they do a beautiful job with their with their fit fit and finish on that. So, um, bitten is another bait out there for the toppers, and a little more square blade like this. It's got a nice sound. It really works slow. It pushes water really slow like that. A little so, more chop. Uh, when my kids were younger and and, and still uh, these musky madness lures, they make a topper too. Um, Tom Riedel does a really nice job on this. And this bait is really sneaky. It really catches a lot of fish. This one's still bent up for some fish right here. I gotta straighten it out. But um, catches multiple species too. Yeah, pike, bass, everything. Great for kids, in my opinion. This is one of the better toppers out there for a kid to throw. I like it. You threw them when you were three or four years yeah, old. Yeah, caught smallies on them and stuff. <laughs> everything too. So, uh, good bait. Um, Rich is kind of, Rich Reinhardt's got a bait that he's coming out with. It's kind of a, it's a little bit of a secret, and it's going to be really nice. It's built really well. Um, I think uh, I'll let him, if you ever run into him in sports shows or see him on musky fishing tips and tricks, you can talk to him a little bit about his uh, his topper. It is, it's got a really nice sound. It really yeah. does. I can't wait to the next one. And Another one is uh, Lee's. Lee Lures. He makes those on occasion. Yep. He's coming out with some, he's, uh, I think he's remaking them. Yeah. I like how, he, you know, he'll shrink two of them in the back like this. This is kind of nice for those short. That's pretty, I, I, I like that style. So this is a real old one. Yep. So one. toppers are something you really need. And, and even in in June, I seem like we catch most of our fish on, on seems like on toppers and stuff. And, and again in September. And you get those mid-60 degree water temp. And they've heard every prop bait there is. <laughs> And it isn't just Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I've netted a 53 on Mille Lacs. I know of a 54 on Mille Lacs that came on a topper. I've caught multiple mid-40s on Mille Lacs and other lakes in Minnesota on toppers. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they're hearing too many loud baits and a subtle bait will get them to bite. Just a little squeal. With a good squeal, it will. And, you know... Um, so that's kind of my thing on toppers. You got to try them. Yeah, got to try them. Um, they're so easy to throw, and, but they're so effective. And if you take a bait, like say a topper stopper or whatever, you got two five odd hooks. They're all hooks. Yeah. They hook up really good. Um, so let's get into walk the dogs. I would advise having hooks on your bait. Yeah, hooks on the bait are really good. <laughs> it might help you catch it a little bit more so, fish. Uh, let's get a walk to dogs. Originally, the original walk to dogs out there that we, a lot of people saw. Um, I don't know if you give them the original, but you know, the Pose Giant Jackpot. Um, this one actually is signed Bob Mesa Comer 1995 on it. It's a long uh, time ago. I don't care about keeping trinkets on my walls, so I run them with book grooves in them. <laughs> so it just to me it just it has it a little more style yeah it is more style so <laughs> um you can play around with with uh with walk you can move the screw eyes down you can see the screw eyes are different on each one of these you can also take the screw eye from the middle hook and move it to the back yeah and that will make it right on its axis a little bit better like yeah. that so there's a bunch of different things you can do if you're missing fish yeah but you got walk to dog baits do what? They go wide? Wide. And then sometimes they just go like this, really wide on their axis, right on their axis. And there's yep. two different, you know, and you want them to splash, splash, spoosh, splash. Spoosh, spoosh, spoosh. Spoosh. Exactly. So, the, you know, modify these to how you want them, how you're getting bit. I still a good bait. I keep the giant jackpot in there. Um, Hokum Tackle came out with the little, the fat boy for a while. This one works really tight. Um, rides right on its axis is a good one too. Never thrown that one. You haven't thrown that one? No, I don't think so. Oh, I have. Of course you have. Um, works very similar to a dancing raider. You know, Joe Booker puts rattles in this one. Yep. I, don't, I don't know if the newer ones. This one's probably 15, 20 years old, so it may not have. Um, the new ones may not have rattles in it, but it doesn't look 20 years old. It is for plastic bait. Yeah, he's had the top. You know. It looks brand around. new. Mm -hmm. And um, I got a perch one that's really chewed up. I don't know why. I yeah. couldn't find that one. My that one's chewed one. up. I don't think you've thrown that um, one much. Great bait, especially early on. 
you get those 55 degree days in June and it makes a big difference. Um, you can put fish in the boat on those. So, um, Josh Rabska makes a really good walk to bait, walk to dog style bait. He's got a bigger one and a small one. Again, wide and, and that one being tight. So you kind of got both gamuts. His finish is unbelievable. They Multiple sploosh a lot. They sploosh a lot. They throw a lot of water. Um, they're built like a tank and uh, good hooks. He even bends them out, tees them out so you don't wear the finish of the of the bait out. So you can see that how the hook is teed like that. And they're good strong hooks. And good strong hooks and the hooking percentage is a little bit better. Um, so definitely um, a, needed a needed bait out there. You catch Josh Rapska on uh, Facebook. You can search for his name and he's usually selling one out there. This one is called a One-Eyed Willie. One-Eyed Willie. One-Eyed Willie is a pretty good bait. It, again, it's a little fish. little uh, tighter wobble on that one. I believe Stealth Tackle makes that bait. That's um, one eye. It's a really nice bait, too. I, I definitely keep one of those in the boat. Um, I think I've caught at least one or two on this one. Yes, you have. Yep. According to my calculation. Weagles. Weagles. I like the Weagles. We catch a lot of fish on the Weagles. That's a, a Suic Weagle. Suic Weagle. There was a famous... Before Suic bought Weagle, it was made by Steve Cady. Yep. And Steve Cady put a white dot on every one of his. No white dot. No white dot, dot on that one. But this this one right here, which you've caught fish on. Yep. And that one, which you've caught fish on. They yep. work exactly the same. So Suic did a very good job and making sure that they run exactly the way the original manufacturer made them and the density of the wood everything and um, I've had very good luck with the Suix version um, I know the Katie versions I think go for almost like a hundred and some dollars uh, but this one is not you know you can buy them today from Suix and they are really good so this one's beaten that one's beaten up exactly so a lot there they're a heavier bait um, you keep those fish pinned and bring them into the boat right away. They, you don't want them Unless to throw it because it's a lot of, it's a lot of weight swinging. I've seen you lose some fish on them when the bait goes flying. I I'm mean, like, oh. because it's a lot of weight. So, yeah. um, very good bait though. Last but least on the walk the dogs that I would carry in the boat is a Lee Lure tap stick. Tap stick. And uh, I don't know what color he calls it. I call it pumpkin head. Um, but it is, that one is really light. It's a pine bait, so it's really light in the body, but it's got weight in the back. And, um, I've done very good on lauders like Lake of the Woods and everything. So the top just dances on top dances of the water. Dances on the water back and forth and, um, done very good on this bait. Look, Lee I made tell. A, Lee made a very fine bait. I think I've actually seen this exact same bait, color bait in Lee's boat that maybe even has deeper hook grooves in it. So, um, Okay, we're going to get into prop baits. I was going through to grab top raiders. Yep. I found this one. I think it doesn't have any rear hook on it because of a fish you caught last year. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> we never put another hook <laughs> Clip, 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 and we left it like that. Uh, the only reason I brought this out, it's been a very good color. My, will Fleet Farm please make this custom color again? <laughs> I love an orange top raider, and I've caught so many fish on these, and they don't make that. It was a, it was a Fleet Farm color. The exclusive from back in, I don't know, 2007 or 8 or something like that. But you make it. it again. Joe Booker Tackle, make a custom color for Fleet Farm. Fleet Farm. So that's my point on this one. Start putting them back where they go. And put the BB back in them. So this is the one with the BB <laughs> in the tail. A lot of sound. And you're working it really, really slow. And this is one without the BB in the tail. It's got a good pop. Sometimes they'll like either. But so I mean I've caught fish on this on this one. Um the ones I seem to catch a lot of fish are the older ones. Uh, with the with the babies in the back. I think I caught like two on that one the other year or something. Yeah, this. I don't know. I got a lot of top raiders and I got a lot of old ones and uh, they yeah, yeah. they definitely make a difference. And show me by what 
what's your prop speed that you use on those? It's, uh, it's kind of hard to get the exact speed. But you almost can see the rotation. You can count the rotation as it comes into the boat. That's the speed that we catch a lot of fish on top raiders because that's where that BB would actually get that nice chime in there. Also, um, also that's it's got a nice pop that sound. Yep. And um, big fish like it. Big I mean, fish. That's that's when the big fish we seem to get the big fish. We're working really fast. You'll move fish and you'll push wakes to the boat and the bolt off. Yeah. A lot of times when you're going slower, you'll get those, you'll convert those strikes. So um, that's a little tip on top raiders. Great bait. Got to have them in your boat. A um, little louder, starting to get louder as we're going down the line. Um, Suix has their uh, Nighthawk that. It's a beautiful bait. Uh, teed off in the front. And um, that way you don't, uh, you get a better hooking percentage on that one. And shrink wrap. Shrink wrap in the back with really good hooks. Uh, manufacturers that put good hooks on baits. Good companies. Are good companies. They really are. Don't cheapen up on the hook. And when you're looking at hooks, when, you know, tell the manufacturers what you're looking for. And if they say, well, hooks are too expensive. Well, you shouldn't have to always put good hooks on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. For the manufacturers so um, get them balanced because they a, a heavier hook sometimes makes the bait not run right yeah so you know when the manufacturers have them with the correct weighted hook on there it makes a big difference so yep. um, love Suix version nice pop to it um, got a video that we did last summer um, yeah that uh, shows a lot of, of all the sounds on the prop baits. We did one on prop bait only, yeah, so look that up on our sound. channel. Um, that was a really good video if you want to hear nothing but prop baits. I think we went through 20, 25, 30 different um, prop baits. Yeah. Uh, a bait that I didn't do in that video, I left the bait at home. Um, a lot of people actually messaged me and said, you didn't get you didn't get Lee's bait in there. And chopper. Lee's chopper is a really good one. And uh, yeah, I left it at home, unfortunately, before we did that video. But uh, um, Lee makes color. a really good one. That's the 715 color right there. My favorite. Um, I got an old chartreuse one in the garage. Yep. But um, this one, uh, good hooking percentage with that, uh, that wire that he has down on the bottom. Um, again, he shrink tubes to the back. Got... Um, Definitely get a better hook percentage on those too, but nice snap can work good good speed with this one I would put this up there as a, I would say your speed top waters. You yeah. know what I mean? Maybe on the little lower side of the speed yep. top waters. So there's a time when it talk about sound and there's a speed So I would say sound speed color when it comes to top water. Yeah, so but um, Love this bait right here Um Another bait, especially with the sound, uh, the old pacemaker. This is a wooden one. Done real well with this one. Um, it's got a nice, got a nice sound to it. They click off the, the middle hook right here. I'll, I'll often hand this to a customer when I was in the guiding, and, and it'll they'll go, hey, hey, your bait's broken. It's got a, it's missing part of its hook. Well, it's that way for a reason, so it can click off the back blade. So. Um, but another good bait. This wooden one has caught some really nice fish on it. It's uh, old orange lace pattern. Now you can't buy them in wood. You buy them in plastic. And um, they got a whole different sound to them. Um, they're built a little bit different. Um, still good. Caught fish on them. I do prefer the wood ones if I can get my hands on them. Maybe they can come back with wood someday in special edition or something like Maybe. that. Maybe. We hope so. Maybe a show thing or something. Maybe. So... Um, Gotta put some pressure on these vendors sometimes too. <laughs> Get our good quality made. So, um, this is a Laxual Mini Mag. Um, you can order them online. Usually don't see them sold at shows at all. Uh, American Hardwoods Tackle or something like that. It's a believe. faster bait. It's a fast top water. And there's a time we see a fast top water bike. Yeah. And a couple years ago, and that was money. You, we, you got like a 46 to go airborne. Yep. Yeah. And it, it, it's a, it's a bait. It's a, just that when it starts to get into the sixties 
and they want it super, super, super fast. And this bait can do that. It's got a little shorter pitch on the prop. Now it's got a nice snap. It's got a nice, it's actually got some brass in here, so it's got a nice sound to it. But um, you can work it fast. Bucktail speed. Bucktail speed. Yep. So, and they will, they won't, they won't look at a top rater. They won't look at a, a, any of the other baits. They'll want something like this. So you got to feel the mood out. And, you know, my years of guiding with the customers throwing baits and me following up with a different bait really taught me when and when to wear and how to read the water. And I, you know, I've shared a lot of that success with you. You shared success back with me. And we've been able to figure out some patterns that patterns. that um, we know. We get to the lake, and I'll look at you, and you'll go, it's a topper stopper morning. It's a top raider morning. It's a walk the dog morning. You know what you see in that body of water. Yeah, if there's, like, a little fog going across the water, topper stopper. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all by experience. Yeah. It's all in that. It's so all time on the water. So, um, again, that's the Black Sewell Mini Mag. Um this is an old Holcomb Stomper. Um, showed this on a few different occasions, especially on my on my Facebook page, Musky, Tips, Musky Fishing Tips and Tricks. If you want to check that out on Facebook, but um, this bait's got a nice little snap to it. Pop, 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 pop. Really good bait. Um, has a tendency to soak a little bit of water, um, but uh, so then it's you know it's only good for like a half hour, and then you got to put on another one, but. Uh, Happens. It happens. Now we got, I mean, I, I'm not afraid to throw baits in big chop. I mean, two, three foot waves, but you want to start getting a little bit louder. Um, years ago, we used to use a uh, bait called a Slammer Thunderhead, a big prop in the front. Uh, this was my go-to bait years ago. Caught plenty of good fish on that. Um, now I've, I've gone into um, throwing the Chaos a whole line of chaos baits uh, uh this is the the big mama, big mama the, the little there. sister and um this is the twisted sister and that's the big, the big mama. mama and um between these three you can get on chaos tackle.com these are i mean you almost really cover your gamut when it comes to good prop baits this one this one's got a nice snap to it for everyday normal pop you start to get to a little bit more foot and a half chop you get the twisted sister um, I've moved fish on these baits when other baits out there, prop baits are not moving fish. The big, the, the chaos baits got a really nice pop to them. And it's more of a deeper, deeper, crisper thump, if I want to say that. You know, you and I have seen side by side up on the Lake of the Woods where this bait will definitely outproduce other baits out yeah. there. So, um... Give them a try. Um, this one, huh? did you, you got, put that? On? I got a wire on this one. That's yeah. They do that on the Twisted Sister. I did it on the Big Mama. I did oh. it. I stuck a screw eye in here and put a little wire on it so it clicks off the blade. But you can actually buy this one as a clicker. Yeah. And it comes that way. So um, nice little. And if you want to get that tick or whatever that's going on, tick 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 as a, as a prop. So yeah. Something different. Um, real big big waves. You got the. Uh, the Big Mama Dirty B. This thing's got a front prop and a back prop. And chug, 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 chug. You're not going to get a lot of speed over it. No. But if you want to chug up like a three, four foot wave, yep. um, definitely really good. Um, Minnesota fish really like this big old loud, loud bait. So uh, give them a try. Um, well, I think we got all the baits talked through. I think we got through the pile. Mostly. Mm -hmm. And... Make sure to come to the Wausau Muskie Bash on March 19th and 20th. through the 20th. Mm -hmm. I'll be speaking in the 20th. Yep, at 1 o'clock. Yep, at 1 o'clock. And um, make sure... Patterns and presentations for patterns big... Patterns and presentations for big, big muskie. Musk and you caught some great big muskie. You had three 30-pounders last year. Only three. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully more this year. But, well, tell us in the comments on what baits you want us to do next. For the next episode of Tackle Talk. Episode 4. Episode 4. Well, make sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video or adventure.